Creepy Places Global. We're currently in Clonbaris, Wales, um, as you can see. This is actually an area of uh, Snowdonia, and the big peak over there is Snowden. However, around here is another castle. Yay! Cheery, Andrew. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, he's been to so many castles, and I've been thrilled over every single one, and he's like, not another castle. <laughs> this time is Dolbadarn Castle, which was uh, created by a Welsh prince to fight those evil English invaders. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> and um, it was also once a prison, and we've been there and had some, uh, got some time to do some EVP work and explore that uh, interesting little tower. But... In the meantime, Wales is awesome, man. Am I allowed not to look at you? It's not always about me. I yes, it is. Me, me, me. Me, 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 me. me. <laughs> Dolbadarn Castle, also called Castel Dolbadarn, is a 50 foot tall ruined castle located near the lake of Clinbadarn in Clumbaris, Wales. The area was used for military purposes since the 6th century, but the current structure was built sometime between 1220 and 1230 by Clewellyn the Great, who was a Welsh prince who was born in 1172 and died April 11th, 1240. During the Norman invasion of Wales that began in 1067, the Normans advanced into Wales and taking land in the north and occupying territory in the south by the late 11th century. During this time, Clewellyn controlled the Kingdom of Gwyeth in North Wales and extended his influence over much of Wales during the early years of the 13th century. He did, however, face several challenges, including dealing with the threat of the kings of England and maintaining his authority over Wales. To do this, he started to build castles in the area to maintain control, which included Dolbadarn Castle. The castle was important because it controlled an important mountain pass, now called Clumbaris Pass, and also it helped Clewellyn claim authority as the Lord of the Mountains and Coast of Wales. The Marcher Lords, who were nobles appointed by the King of England to guard the border between England and Wales, adopted a style of stone castles that included circular keeps and an integrated system of curtain walls. During the second phase of building at Dolbadarn that started around the 1240s, Clewellyn added these elements to the existing castle in order to incorporate the latest military technology. Following Clewellyn's death, the Kingdom of Gwyveth went into decline, and in 1247 much of his eastern lands were taken by Henry III of England, who became king in 1216. Clewellyn's grandson, Clewellyn ap Gwyveth, who was born in 1223 and died December 11, 1282, and became the King of Wales in 1258, took power in 1255. After the signing of the Treaty of Montgomery in 1267, Henry III recognized him as Prince of Wales. He then imprisoned his brother, Olwyn ap Griefev, before he extended his powers across all of Wales. Olwyn, also known as Olwyn the Red who died in 1282 and once ruled parts of Northern Wales, was released from imprisonment in 1277 after 20 years. Though there's been debate over which castle he was held in, many believe it was the top floor of Dolbadon Castle. War broke out again between the Welsh and the English during the reign of Edward I, who was King of England from 1272 to 1307. This revolt was led by Clewellyn's brother, David ap Grievev, who was a Welsh prince and the last independent ruler of Wales who was born July 11, 1238 and died October 3, 1283. In December of 1282, Clewellyn was killed during an ambush near Bilf Wells and David assumed power, but in 1283, he was forced south into Snowdonia and in May of that year, Dolbadon Castle became the center of David's government. Edward deployed 7,000 troops to detain David at the castle, who was finally captured on June 21, 1283 and was executed in October of that year. To maintain control of North Wales, Edward built several new castles and walled towns and Dolbadon became obsolete, and its timber was used in the construction of Carnarvon Castle. The remaining parts of the castle continued to be used as a manor house into the 14th century, but by the 18th century, the castle was empty and in ruins. Popularity in the castle started around 1760, 
as it became a subject for many painters. In 1941, the castle was given to the state by Sir Michael Duff, a British socialite who was born May 3, 1907, and died March 3, 1980. It is now maintained by Caudill, and is a Grade 1 listed building and as a scheduled monument, as is considered one of the finest surviving examples of a Welsh round tower. It can be visited for free and is accessible by a footpath. As for the paranormal, there are no reports of the castle being haunted. Now, here is Dolbodarn Castle. Well, this area of Snowdonia used to be an old slate mine. You see some of it right over there. So all these slate workers were next to a castle. And uh, this very kind lady, Tracy, at the bed and breakfast we've been staying at, she's like, it's just ruins. You can tell she's like, from the UK like I'm more impressed with it than you know most English people are <laughs> <laughs> trying to put him off going to yet another castle. oh there's more there's still more castles to go to <laughs> that's a view oh and we're going on top of Mount Snowden too all right, let's. Well, we're trying to find the entrance to the castle, and I'm assuming the man in green walking to the castle is the right one. That could well be right. <laughs> you want to hear something silly? We did a loop. <laughs> we're parked right there, and we walked all the way around and came up here. But we have time before we go on top of Mount Snowden anyway, so. You saw the pretty way. You saw the pretty way. <laughs> It's all about me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I will say thus far, this is the prettiest way we've gotten to a castle. Though I did like the one to Ogmore. This is a beautiful area. It really is, you know. I don't know if we have any four leaf clovers here. Don't quite see them. And there's the castle. Alright, we've made it. Actually, it wasn't that far of a walk, really. But you know what the best part about this place is? What's that? It's free. Nice view. Well, we're going to head up there. That's our mission now. Since we get to go on top of Mount Snowden, we go to a castle, then we go on top of a mountain. And you think Welsh, English. It is a good view. The mountain just behind. Uh, 
that's a view too. It's a lake the other side. So, as we just learned, me and Andrew just learned that this place was more used as a prison rather than, I mean, it's a castle, but it was a prison castle, really. Actually, just worth coming up to get the picture X views. The old slate mine over there. We're gonna go upstairs in a second. I think you can actually go inside. <laughs> oh, you know, for a prison, if, you know, for, for where they held prisoners here, they had a great view. All right, picture done. I'm gonna go do a walk around and then go inside. Can you hear the sheep? Some of these walls are probably part of the old building. Obviously they probably have some modern touches to it to keep it in shape. People leaving their mark on history. It's all carvings on in here. Dating back to is it 1880? <laughs> they even did vandalism back then. Oh, we can go further up, you know. A lot of people who think there are kings, but no castles. This is built in 1230. 1230, huh? Young. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I won't touch it for right on. Yeah, these are stairs are narrow.
It's about as far as you can go. Not that many higher. So I think if you, maybe sometime, oh look, more vandalism, um, mm. I wonder, sticking the hands through the bars, see if I can get behind <laughs> the stairs, it's probably not safe really, I'm being denied, oh what is cool though, who thought, you know, I didn't think you voiced away uh, our awesome host at the bed and breakfast. I thought it was going to be like some. <laughs> and actually, it's pretty nice. I'll go first. Yeah, you go first. And Take place slowly. Yeah, and if I'll go slow, so if you fall, I'll b block your fall. Yes. <laughs> That wasn't so bad, was it? Remember, me, 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 me. Me, 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 all about me. All these private jokes we have that nobody's gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna do a little session with some of my Welsh, Welshiness. Welshiness. <laughs> Since this was technically built to um, withstand uh, English invaders. English bad. English good. English bad. Well, I'm sure if I ask those guys out there who are speaking Welsh. <laughs> Dolbandarn Castle. <clears throat> Creso. Hello, Ern Pa Aichi. Beth U Ape Anu Bang from outside. Beth U Floy Flag Except for the traffic in the distance is the far distance actually is quite mm, quiet on here. Peaceful. Sat Waithaf Chi Fahu Welsh talkers in the background. They're here, they're there, they're everywhere. Waithaf Chi Adaladu Castel Hun. Wainling the Great. There's like an alarm coming down from a village, which is like two miles away, yet we can hear it all the way up here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Beware that's of it. trains. <laughs> Let me try. I think this is how you say the guy's name in Clawwin the Great, the one who built this. I think this is how you, I'm going to mm. ask it again in full Welsh. I think this is how you pronounce his name in Welsh. Please, do not use my Welsh as a history lesson. Udikfil se ablu a ford. All of a sudden the wind picks up. That's supernatural, I swear. Uh, yeah. I swear, it's supernatural. It's a ghost bringing the wind up, isn't it? Yeah, right. Then we're, then we're done. We're done. 
Beth, Waithoth, Chi, Ur, Galu, Furin, Ur, Ur, and Sla. The Alec in Vower. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's thank you. <laughs>Well, we're done. It's a small spot, so there's not much to do here. You know, we did our little session and see if we caught anything. But now we're off to the Slate Museum. As the choo-choo go by. Be careful, Andrew. Nasty. Nasty. We. So those guys right there, they're like the very first Welsh people we probably yeah. come across in all of Wales. <laughs> oh, off to the museum. <laughs> all righty. Tobinar Castle. If you go for walks, it's one of the things you can see in Wales. Castles, slate mines, trains, and lots and lots of sheep. Well, me and my friend Andrew, over there, we've been traveling the trails of Clambaris. Uh, I got it eventually. We started all the way down here. Now we're all the way up here, but Want a different view of Dalbadarn Castle? There it is. And as the uh, people in the UK will say, this place is majestic. And by the way, we're heading, we're going to be doing a steep walk down somewhere. <laughs>